All right, guys, it is a very exciting day for us up here at Altitude Adjustment. As you can see, we finally have a structure behind us. All of our footings and foundations are done. We've started some of our waterproofing and we are working on our under slab insulation. Episode two of Altitude Adjustment, let's get going. Altitude Adjustment, a build original series is brought to you by Builders First Source. Delta Millworks, Huber Engineered Woods, Hella, and Shark Bite. All right, we might as well start down here on the back of the house on the retaining walls. So we have these two huge foundation retaining walls that are really supporting the majority of the back side of the house and also our gigantic swimming pool structure. So these two walls are stepped and tiered in their height. And in addition to that, we have exterior stone that's going to be applied to the outside of it. So if you're looking from the lake up at the back of the house, they just look like a continuation of the rest of the house. So the inside of both of these are going to get filled with dirt. So as the excavation crew comes in and starts to do our backfill, we're gonna be filling the interior of these up to a certain point. Now these are also going to act as planters to try and soften the look of the back of the house a bit so you don't see a ton of concrete and stone. So as the excavator comes in and starts to backfill, we'll get the dirt up within about six inches of the top, which is why we've stopped the waterproofing. So on both of these walls, we'll have dirt on one side and finished stone on the other side. So we wanna make sure that we're applying our waterproof membrane to the inside of these walls. That's gonna make sure that we don't get any water transfer through the foundation wall to our exterior stone, which just helps the longevity of that stone and have less issues down the line. So excavator's gonna come in, get these backfilled. This first one will be our lower tier. We'll have the planter through it. And then on this second wall, this is actually what butts up to the back of our swimming pool structure. So these big walls behind me, our swimming pool sits up on top of all of that. So we'll fill all of these in with dirt. We'll have a little bit more tiered planter. But again, we've included the waterproofing on these walls. We just wanna make sure we've done everything we can to ensure that the stone that we apply to the outside of the walls looks beautiful and lasts for a really long time. Hence the reason we applied the waterproofing. But what we did not do on these was the drainage mat. So we've done a drainage mat on the rest of the house. We'll walk around out front and take a look at how that looks, but we didn't need it necessarily on these big foundation walls. They're retaining walls. They're going to have water in them. They're made to be built as planters. So waterproofing, good first step, no need for a drainage mat. Let's go check out the side of the house. All right, so now we're around the front of the house where we have all of our drainage mat and waterproofing applied on all of the walls that separate dirt from living space. You'll notice on this side of me, we have no waterproofing. We also have no drainage mat. So this is actually our garage foundation walls. So inside of the garage will be backfilled completely to the top with dirt. We'll have dirt on the outside. No reason for waterproofing on either side of those walls. However, the wall that separates the main house from the garage is waterproofed from the garage side. Now, the reason that it's done that way is so that any of that dirt that's piled up next to the wall separating the garage from the lower level is separated by waterproofing and protected. So as we transition from the garage structure to the structure that separates living space from excavation or backfill, we have applied two things. So first we came through and applied a 60 mil waterproof. This is a fluid applied, sprays on, super simple application. The crew actually comes in first and they will remove all of the form ties. So they'll knock all the form ties off, patch all of the holes by hand where the form ties were. Then they come through spray the fluid applied and just continue moving across the front of the house. Once that's done, that's when all of our drainage mat gets applied. 
And this stuff's super simple. You've seen it a ton of times before online. It is simply a dimple mat. It makes sure that if water gets in, it has a way to drain. So this just separates and creates channels that allow the water to get through. So the good thing about this system is that we have waterproofing on the concrete itself. So it's protecting the concrete from anything getting through. Then we have our drainage mat that just creates that channel. So in the event, if we got another big snowstorm throughout a year, another big snow year, have a ton of runoff, this is going to be something that is gonna be really great. It'll help get that water and moisture down to our footing drain, where then it'll run out into our detention basins that are in the yard. So pretty cool, love this setup. We install this a ton on our houses. But here's another thing that's really unique to think about. As they are installing this stuff, we have some extremely tall foundation walls here. They can't necessarily get to the top in one visit. So what we've done is they've gone up nine feet right now. We'll come through, install our footing drain, start backfilling. Once we get the dirt up to another point where they can finish the rest of the top of this wall, our waterproofing crew will come back out, finish the rest of the waterproofing and drainage mat up to our level that we've marked as our top, and then we'll be good to finish backfilling. Now in this case, we will have about 12 inches of the foundation that'll be above the grade level. So we've asked the waterproofing company to make sure that they stop all of their waterproofing 12 inches down from the top of the wall. That way, when we get to the end and we're ready to apply a different finish to the top of those exposed foundation walls, whether it's stone, foundation plaster, or something different, we're not having to worry about working with the waterproofing on the wall and putting our materials over the top of it. Plus that top 12 inches of the wall is gonna be above grade and won't see any water like the rest of it would. So we have to work in a little bit of stages, especially when these walls get really tall. It's just hard to get all the way to the top in one visit. I'm gonna take you guys inside the house now. I wanna walk you through some of the areas that we had to waterproof inside of the building itself. And we also have the crew out there installing our under slab insulation right now. So let's go check it out. All right, we're inside of the lower level of this house and it has a very cool layout. So the entire back of this house is at grade level. So they have an incredible view of the lake and a really, really bright lower level. This isn't going to feel like a basement. We're not gonna feel like we're trapped in because the entire back side of the house is windows, floor to ceiling, and has an amazing view. But one of the things that comes with that is because it is a walkout, we need to make sure that we have insulation in on our foundation before the crew comes through to start backfilling. So I'm gonna walk you through what the guys are doing today. So the guys are installing an R10 rigid insulation, and this is going to follow the entire wall. Anywhere that we've got slab meeting up with grade on this lower level, we're gonna install the R10 insulation all the way across the backside. On these few areas where we have pieces of wall that jet into the lower level, like these two walls here, we're actually gonna just apply that same insulation about four feet into the space. And right now they're just installing the vertical insulation. So all the stuff that goes against the foundation wall underneath the backfill. Once it's backfilled at the time when we're ready to start doing our slab, before we get it poured, but after we've got our gravel down, all of our sub rough, we're actually gonna come through and install more of the rigid insulation on a flat plane underneath the slab, four feet into the house. This is part of Utah's building code. It's something that we're required to do. And it's just something we have to make sure that we squeeze into the building schedule between waterproofing, but before we start backfilling. So that's what the crew's out here doing today. They'll get this knocked out. We'll start our backfill first thing on Monday morning. So things are moving along here really quick. Let's walk across the basement level of this house. I'm gonna show you a few areas where the grade changes and we actually had to do some interior waterproofing and have to do a few extra things before we start backfill. Let's go check it out. 
All right, so the wild thing about this basement is we have over eight different grade changes between our footings. So if you look across the lower level behind me, we have footing set at a ton of different heights. Now in episode one, we talked about this a little bit. We need to make sure that we're below our frost level. So there are multiple different digs all happening at different heights. This makes sure that our footings are down below frost and that we're protected. But one of the other things that's kind of unique about this level is we have a huge bunk room that is actually set down three feet lower than the rest of the lower level. So because we're going to have a separating wall, this wall behind me, that is backfilled dirt on one side, yet underneath on the bunk room side will be living space. We've done some interior waterproofing here. So I had the guys come through and apply the 60 mil waterproofing on the top three feet of this wall. So our three feet that has dirt into living space is protected from any moisture. Now, some of these walls are huge and a lot of these walls don't actually need waterproofing. Some of them do need waterproofing, but it can't happen till further down the line. So I wanna show you this pool structure. Talk a little bit about how that's going to work and when we're going to be able to put waterproofing on that, how we have to juggle some of these trades to make sure everything lines up just perfect. Let's go check it out. There is almost no better view of the pool structure than up here at the top of the lot. So I wanna just give you an overview of this because things are gonna happen here pretty quickly and this is going to change pretty significantly. So this whole tall portion of the foundation walls you see behind me is what's holding our swimming pool. So we have an infinity edge pool that is right outside the back patio at the main floor level. So this thing is elevated above 28 foot tall foundation walls. It is a very cool structure with a very amazing view. You can't complain about this incredible view. But a few complications with how this structure is actually built. So as we're doing our foundation walls, we actually struggle a little bit with how tall the forms end up getting. We have very limited space within those walls which makes it really, really challenging to tie all of the rebar. We also have limited space to pump concrete, and we have limited space to pull forms when we're done. So building this structure over here took a good majority of our footing and foundation time, but we got through it. We were able to get it pumped in one of our first couple pours and move on to the rest of the walls of the house. So at this point, as we start backfilling, because of our LOD, our limited disturbance, if you watched episode one, we talked about how we only have about a 10 foot boundary around the house in order to work in. This is gonna make backfilling a little bit of a challenge. So we're gonna have to bring in some of our mini machines along with our regular excavators. We're going to start with excavation clear on the back side and try and work our way up and around the front of the house. So we'll use some of the mini machines in order to get around the back side of those retaining walls that I showed you at the beginning of this episode. Then we're likely going to have to do one of two things, either bring in a rock chucker truck that can shoot dirt or gravel into the swimming pool pit, or we're gonna have to find a way to crane it in. Now it's likely we're going to end up filling the bottom 18 feet or so of that with backfill, so dirt, gravel. Our swimming pool is more of a hot tub or a small like casual cocktail pool. So it's not very deep. It's five feet deep at its deepest. So if you can imagine those 28 foot tall walls, they're gonna have to get brought up a ton. So our bottom 15 feet of it, we're gonna backfill. We'll bring the waterproofer back so they can actually waterproof and separate this main wall that separates the swimming pool from the lower level. We'll get that waterproofed, get a drainage mat on there. Then we can finish backfilling up to a point where the swimming pool contractor is going to need to start building their forms for their pool walls. This is a very complicated little swimming pool, but it is going to be well worth it when we're done. 
Now this project isn't as quick as some other projects that you may see on Build Show series here on the network. But one of the things we have to keep in mind is this is a 10,000 square foot, very complicated build. So this is going to take naturally a little bit longer than some of the other builds that you've seen. We're gonna try and document as much as we can from start to finish to show you how this entire process works and what it's like building here in Park City, Utah. But you guys, that is it for episode two. Stay tuned, episode three is coming up real soon. We're gonna start all of our footing drains, we're gonna get backfilled, and we're gonna start working on all of our under slab sub rough, along with our vapor barrier, our radon system, and a whole bunch of other really cool stuff. But that's it today from Altitude Adjustment. Stay tuned for episode three because this is a build you are not going to want to miss. You guys know you can follow me on social media at Stephanie Builds It. We'll see you next time on The Build Show.